Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. Hey, do you like robots? If you do, that's great because that's the subject of Lesson 10. We're going to talk about robots. Specifically, we're going to talk about the worker of the year. So let's focus on, let's learn about robots. Yeah, sounds interesting, right? Think about different kinds of robots, different kinds of robots and different things that robots can do. So two things, right? Different kinds of robots and the things that those robots do. Are you ready? Let's first take a look at a picture here. This is a kind of a confusing picture, isn't it? What is it? It looks like something maybe out of Matrix, the movie Matrix, right? What we can see is a lot of machinery, right? There's a lot of machinery. Oops, let's write that slowly. Machine. Of course, you know the word machine, but we're going to say machinery because when we talk about many machines working together, we can say machinery. And these are actually what kind of machines? They are robots. And they're in a factory and they build things like cars or big pieces of uh, big things that we use, okay? So this, <clears throat> this is a factory and there's a lot of machinery and there's a, many robots in a factory. Okay, let's begin now with the vocabulary. Our first word, oh no, that's too bad, right? She's falling down. She made a mistake. What is another word for mistake? We can say error. That's a little himdero because you have the two R's. Error, error. An error is a mistake. If you make a mistake, you make an error, okay? So she made an error, and that's too bad. I hope it doesn't hurt, right? Okay, next one. Now, here, a person who has something. Of course, you know this uh, type of scene. Uh, you've been to coffee shops or you've been to stores many times. The person behind the counter or in the store is a person who has something. They are the owners. Sometimes they're the owners. The owner of the store or the owner of the coffee shop, of the restaurant, whatever. The person who owns the place, that is the owner. They're not always the owner. Sometimes they are the worker, right? But somebody who has something. Do you have anything? If you have something like your book bag or your pencil, you are the owner. You are the owner of your bag or your pencil or your book, right? Or your toy or your video game. You are the owner because you have it. You have something. Okay, next one. Something made by people to do work. Hmm, that's a head scratcher. Something made by people to do work. What is it? We talked about it before. It's a machine, right? I told you machinery is when you have many machines working together in one place. We call it machinery. But one is a machine. It's something people make it to do work for them. Of course, our modern lives are very easy because we have many machines that do our work. A car is a machine that does our work. We don't have to walk, right? Walking is work, right? But we can ride. So the machine does our work for us, right? Okay, next one. Looks interesting, like a detective is looking for something. Something that helps to solve a problem. You guys know Sherlock Holmes? Do you know Sherlock Holmes? I hope so. Sherlock Holmes is a very famous detective in British literature, right? Sherlock Holmes is a very famous detective. A detective goes to the scene of a crime and he looks with a magnifying glass. He tries to find information that will help him solve a problem. What do we call those little pieces of information? We call them a clue. A clue. And if you have many, usually you have many clues, right? Detectives look for clues at the scene of a crime. Maybe not just one, but maybe there are several. Fingerprints, maybe old clothes, 
blood. Ooh, I wonder what happened, right? But these are clues that help us to solve a problem, especially when we want to know who did something. Okay? Okay, next one. Holiday. Oh, very nice, right? Do you want a holiday? Is it time for a holiday? Maybe you think so. This is a very nice place to take a holiday. What's another word for holiday? We can say vacation. 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 Okay? So actually, it's interesting. British people, British English, they usually say they're going on holiday. I'm going on holiday. Americans are more commonly say vacation. I have a vacation coming up. I'm going on vacation. So we go on, go on holiday or go on a vacation. British people will say go on holiday. I am going on holiday. Americans will say I'm going on a vacation. Or you could just say I'm going on vacation. That's okay too. Okay, next one. Okay, what's going on here? Do you know how to play tennis? Do you have a tennis coach? If a, a person tells someone how to do something, there's a verb for that. You're probably thinking teach, right? Teach is good, that's, that's true, but there's another word that means to tell someone how to do something. What is that word? You may not have heard of it before. It's direct. But if you think about it, you have heard this word before, especially if you like movies, right? When people make movies, there are many actors and actresses, right? Well, there's a person in charge who's telling the actors and actresses how to act, how to perform in the movie. We call that person a director, a movie director a movie director because that is a person who directs the actors and actresses on how to do something. So direct is also used when we want to say that something is telling another person how to do something. Someone or something is telling another thing or person how to do something. That is direct. And usually direct is, is on the spot right? It's telling someone how to do something right now, okay? Of course, you can also use teach, right? But it's a little bit different, right? Teachers usually give you knowledge. Uh, directors tell you how to do something right now, okay? So it's a little bit different, but they're very similar. Okay, next one. Seven, having many parts. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay, it looks like art. Is it a type of machine? What do you think it does? Maybe it Maybe it makes people invisible. That would be cool, huh? But I, I don't know what it does. But anyway, it's having many parts. There are a lot of parts on it, right? It looks, what does it look? It looks very complex. It looks very complex. Complex means it has many parts. It's uh, very, uh, uh, has so many different parts, it's very difficult to figure out. It's complex. Another word, complicated, right? Complicated. You could also use that word. Complicated. 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 Well, that's a complex word. It has many letters. <laughs> okay? So that's very interesting. Complex has many parts. It's complicated. It has many parts. It's very difficult to figure out. Okay, next one. Uh oh. This guy's stupid. <laughs> What's he doing? Joshim hey, how does she? <laughs> right? He's smoking. And these are firecrackers. If that ash falls, he's gonna blow up. He's crazy, right? Dangerous. What's another word for dangerous? Whoa, this is a complex word. Hazardous. 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 Of course, if you just say hazard, hazard is danger. O-U-S means it's an adjective. You're describing some place or some situation. Hazardous. Ooh, that place is hazardous. Or that situation is hazardous. Extremely, extremely, normal, normal, right? Extremely hazardous. This guy is crazy. He's not very smart. Okay, next one. Oh no, she looks like she's tired, very tired. What's another word for very tired? We say fatigued, fatigued.
fatigued. Fatigued. That's a little difficult. If you are fatigued, you are very tired. Maybe she's been doing her homework too much. She's very tired. She is fatigued. Okay, next one. A person who works. Now, a lot of people, a lot of uh, workers have very difficult jobs, right? They work with their hands. They lift things. They use tools to do things. What do we call them? We call them workers, right? Just a worker, a worker. For example, a construction worker. Construction is uh, kong su jung, right? Kong su jung. Uh, that's construction area, right? So a person who works there is a worker, construction worker. But you can also say office worker, right? Office worker, you could also say that. So people who work are called workers very easily. That's a very easy word. Okay. Next one, to give something in exchange for money. So in this picture, this person looks like he's helping them to <laughs> I almost said the word. I don't want to say it yet, okay? He want, they want to get rid of their house, but they're not going to give it away. They're going to what? They're going to sell their house, right? They're going to sell their house. And look at the word, the, the word in the picture here, sold. Sell is an irregular verb. So we say sell, sold, sold because it's past. They sold the house. They exchanged the house for money. They didn't give away the house, right? They want money in return for the house. Have you ever sold something? Maybe you had uh, like an old doll or an old toy that you don't want anymore, but you don't want to throw it away. Maybe you could sell it to a friend or maybe a book or a video game that you, you're finished with. You don't want it anymore. You might sell it to somebody else. So you exchange it for money. Okay, next one. What's this? This is a machine that sucks, sucks dirt and air off the floor. So it's right, it sucks it up. What do we call this? We call it a, whoa, that's a big word, vacuum cleaner, vacuum cleaner. Okay, you know this machine, right? Maybe you're playing your game and your mom starts using the vacuum cleaner. You're like, mom, it's too noisy, right? It drives you crazy. But hey, mom has to clean, right? Maybe you should use the vacuum cleaner, help mom out, right? So that's good. So don't complain if the vacuum cleaner, you hear the vacuum cleaner and you're trying to do something because you want to have a clean house. You don't want dirt all over the floor, dirt and dust. And if you have a dog, little hair all over the floor, you want to be able to suck that air up with a vacuum cleaner. By the way, the vacuum cleaner is another machine, right? So it's another example of many machines that make our lives easier. It does the work for us. It's very easy to use a vacuum cleaner instead of a broom, right? Broom is uh, dirty and difficult to use. Vacuum cleaner is much easier. Yes, it's noisy, but it's easier. Okay, next one. To control a car. Now, actually, the word is in this picture, right? The, the word is drive, and we can see that word right here, drive, right? But this word is driver. So, of course, in English, many verbs we can change to noun, and we can say the person who does it, right? Before we saw worker, if we just use work, that's a verb. Worker is a person. Drive is a verb. Driver is a person. She will be a driver. She is learning. She is a student driver. So she is learning to drive. To drive is to control a car. It's also an irregular verb, so it changes form for the past tense. We say drive, drove, driven. Drive, drove, driven. Okay, so that is to control a car, it's to drive a car. Can you drive a car? Probably not yet, but don't try. It's dangerous, right? It's hazardous. But when you're older, you can learn how to drive a car. But be careful, always. It's a dangerous machine. It's a hazardous machine. Be careful, be safe, and you'll be okay. Okay. A very large sea. So if you can see water, water all around for as far as you can see, and maybe it takes you days 
to sail across that sea, we call that an ocean, right? There are only a few big oceans in the world, right? Uh, there are only a few, and they're very big, like the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, right? We call those really big areas of water, we call them an ocean. Smaller areas are called seas, like the Mediterranean Sea, the Caribbean Sea, right? Those are smaller areas of water. Next one, a short time to rest. Before we talked about workers, right? Workers are people who do work. Well, they can't work all the time, right? We need to take a break. We need to drink something or to eat something or go to the bathroom. In that case, we need to take a break. Take a break, right? Take a break. So we usually use it in this expression. Let's take a break. Do you want to take a break? Hey, everybody, it's time to take a break. So take a break means to stop working and to rest for a little bit. Okay, next one. Wow, that's great. If you can throw a dart, and you can hit exactly in the center, no mistake, no error, you have hit it perfectly. Perfect, it's perfect, no mistakes. It's perfect, it is perfect. So that is a perfect shot. In this case, we would say it's a perfect shot. Perfect, right on the middle uh, dot, it's perfect, okay. Let's go over our vocabulary exercises now. How well do you remember the words we just studied? What we're going to do here is we have many sentences. We need to choose the word that best fits in the blanks in these sentences. So these are our words here. We have eight words. Let's review those before we look at the exercises. The first word is error error okay next is owner owner the next one is machine machine the next one is clue clue the next one vacation they vacation vacation okay complex complex next one ooh, long word hazardous hazardous hazardous. Next one is direct. Direct. Okay, let's take a look at these sentences and figure out which word belongs in those blanks, okay? Number one, the beep of this tall building is very rich. Okay, so usually people are rich. And think about it. If someone has a tall building, if someone has a tall building, a tall building, wow, that's a lot of money. That person is very rich. So what do we call a person who has something, whether it's a tall building or just a small pencil? We call that person the owner, the owner. By the way, we use the because there's only one. There's only one owner of the building, okay? The owner of the building. Right? If there's a pencil, somebody owns that pencil. Who is that person? That's only one person. So we don't say a owner of the pencil. That's weird because a means one of many. But there's only one owner of this particular pencil. So we say the owner of this pencil. If only one person owns the building, then it's the owner of the building. Now it's true, many people can own a building, that's true, and we could say one of the owners of this building, but in this case we're talking about the owner, that means there's only one person. So usually we use the with owner, because usually there's only one person who owns something, okay? If there are many people who own the building, then we can say one of the owners, but in this case there's just one person. He's very rich. Wow. Okay. Two. You should push, push this button to turn on this what? What do you turn on by pushing a button? What thing here is turned on by pushing a button? Usually when you push a button, it makes electricity go to a certain thing. It's probably a thing that uses electricity to do people's work. So what do we call that thing? 
we call that thing a machine, right? A machine, usually you push a button and it turns on. Think about your computer. Your computer is a machine, you push a button, it turns on. Your vacuum cleaner is a machine. Usually you can push a button on the vacuum cleaner. Sometimes they have a switch, but it's a switch or a button. You push it and it turns on, okay? Okay, so that's a machine. Number three, I asked him to beep the project. You asked him to do what with the project? Now what word would fit in there? If you want somebody to take control of a project, right? You want him to direct the project and to tell other people what to do. So he tells other people what to do on the project. You asked him to direct the project. Okay, next slide. Four, five, and six. Number four, I'm going to visit Jeju Island, Jejudo. Have you ever been to Jejudo? But anyway, I'm going to visit Jejudo Island during the summer beep. Now, when people have time off, right, and they want to go on a holiday, right, they usually go somewhere. They have a holiday destination. Another word for holiday, especially during the summer when you don't have to go to school, we can say summer vacation. Summer vacation. You also have a winter vacation. It's good being a student, right? You have a lot of time off in the summer. You have a lot of time off of school in the winter. We can call it summer vacation or winter vacation. What will you do in the summer vacation? Or what will you do during the winter vacation? Okay, so summer vacation, winter vacation. This person's going to visit Jejudo on their summer vacation. Okay, or during their summer vacation. Number five, the problem was more beep than I thought. So think about this. There's a problem, right? And it's more something than you think. If you think, okay, I have a problem, maybe you think, I'm going to solve it. It's going to be easy. But then you see the problem, you're like, oh, wow, this problem has many more parts or many more uh, things about it that I didn't think about. So it is more what than I thought. What is something that has many parts to it? It's more complex than I thought. This problem is more complex than I thought. Before I thought it was easy, but then I start doing the problem. Oh my gosh, it's more complex than I thought. It's more difficult than I thought. Okay, number six. I have no beep to help me solve the problem. If you want to solve, you want to solve a problem, right? You need some information that will help you find the answer. We talked about that, right? What are something, something that helps people solve a problem? Little things here and there. What is something that would help people like Sherlock Holmes solve the problem of like a crime scene? Who did it, right? So what word fits there? I have no clues. I have no clues to help me solve the problem, right? You could say I have no clue, but usually clues, there's more than one clue at a uh, for a problem. There are usually many clues, but you could say I have no clue, or I, usually it's more common to say I have no clues to help me solve this problem. Now sometimes people will say, do you know the answer? And a very common expression is, well, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. That's kind of just a set expression that people will say, I don't even have one single clue. I don't have a clue. Or he doesn't even have a clue. It means he's kind of dumb. He doesn't understand how to do the problem. But don't use that, okay, expression. He doesn't have a clue. Better to say, let's help him. Okay, let's help him solve the problem. Okay, next two, seven and eight. I felt foolish when I made an beep in my calculations. Well, right there, and we know that it's going to start with a vowel, right? But what, what's the other part of the sentence that we can use to figure this out? I felt foolish when I made a. When do you feel foolish? When do you feel foolish? You may feel foolish, embarrassed, oh, I'm sorry, right? You feel foolish when you make a mistake right? When you make a mistake, especially in your calculations, sounds like somebody's doing a complex math problem. So they made a mistake. What's another word for mistake? Over here, right? I 
felt foolish when I made an error in my calculations. You make a mistake in your calculations, oops, that was dumb, now I feel foolish, okay? Next one, eight, if a place is beep, then you shouldn't go because you might get hurt. You might get hurt. It's a dangerous place. What's another word for dangerous? Of course, it has the same ending as dangerous. We're looking at this word. If a place is hazardous, then you shouldn't go because you might get hurt. Remember, hazardous is a dangerous place or situation. In this case, it's a place. If a place is hazardous, don't go there. You might get hurt. And hazardous means the same thing as dangerous. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary section of this lesson. Let's take a short break. We'll come back and do the reading.